Hey guys, so we recently purchased a Tesla Model Y and they just gave us the latest version of their full self-drive version 12.3.3 and I'm about to give it my first test drive. Now I think I can offer up a unique perspective on full self-drive because I actually spent over 20 years developing unmanned systems for the military. I was a robotics engineer and during that time I developed one of the first self-driving vehicles in the world over 30 years ago. I uh, wrote the first version of the Joint Architecture for Unmanned Systems, that's a mil spec. And I was a team leader in all three DARPA Grand Challenges. So before I go on that first test drive with the Tesla, I thought it'd be interesting to look back at all the vehicles we worked on 30 years ago. Look at the computers, their capabilities, what type of sensors, how much stuff cost and generally the capabilities and then compare that to what's happening now. Uh, I haven't worked on any of this stuff for 10 years so it's going to be uh, pretty interesting seeing how far we've come. Okay so if we go all the way back to 1991 this is the first vehicle that we worked on. It was on a built on a Kawasaki mule. Uh, this was our we call it the navigation test vehicle. So basically we would develop the everything on this vehicle and then we would push it out to the other uh, stuff in the military that they wanted to do. Uh, so for give you an idea, this was a win, one million dollar project over two years. That's that was the whole budget, and it, we used a GPS with sixty thousand dollars for a GPS unit back then. That's dual frequency carrier phase, six centimeter accuracy. It had a ring laser gyro that was ninety two thousand dollars. That's from Honeywell and we integrated them with a nine-state Coleman filter. It had three computers on board. It was on a VME backplane, shared memory, and the amount of compute power there was uh, less than your phone by far. <laughs> it wasn't much. Uh, it had a stereo vision system from Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which cost $50,000, and it processed a single image every two seconds. Think about that. Try drive. How fast can you drive on that, right? I had sonar from uh, Polaroid camera technology, 16 of them. Actually worked pretty good at, at slow speeds and close ranges, talking like 20 feet or so. We used A-Star Search for the planning and Pure Pursuit for control. We had servo motors on all the actuators, you know, encoders, optical encoders, just so you know where all the motors are at. Uh, we powered it with a generator and lead-acid batteries. The power has come a long way, guys. Wow. We had an inverter that only did like 100 watts. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, so the system actually worked really well. Um, we could take a trailer anywhere in the country, take it off the trailer, drive a path manually, record points, and have it play it back right away. So it was great for demos, and we took it all over the place. And then we applied this technology to a lot of programs, like uh, rapid runway repair, where if you had bomb damaged runways in Europe, we could send out these excavators and they would automatically repair them. So you get your planes and back in the air. We did range clearance. Um, the system would, we'd give it the corner points of a field that would automatically generate a sweep pattern and it could drive that path within a few centimeters. Really accurately drive it in controlled way, pulling like uh, uh, trailers that would be outfitted with ground penetrating radar or magnetometers that could locate anything that was buried. Then you could send out an autonomous excavator and remediate the area. We had a, I think this is a Cat 25L long reach, where you could dig stuff up. It was pretty cool. Uh, we even could mow areas. We once uh, mapped out a whole golf course and used real mowers to mow the whole fairways. Probably the first time a golf course was ever mowed with an autonomous robot. Force protection, you know, we'd, we'd uh, secure bases and integrate that with aerial type platforms. We did something called Jam C, where if you were going to invade a uh, country, <laughs> you would have your LCAC out there with the tanks and stuff on. We'd send these uh, D8 bulldozers in with all this uh, count mine countermeasure type stuff and clear the beach. Lots of cool projects, uh, various other stuff. So we move up to about 2003 and the first ever DARPA Grand Challenge rolls around. Now here's our initial entry. Looks a lot like a Cybertruck, doesn't it guys? And it could drive itself. 
Uh, things have changed a bit now. It's 10 years later. The computers are a lot faster. Everything's getting cheaper. And we're starting to throw things like LiDAR on the front and back. And, and uh, we're using radar and cameras. We're able to process images a lot faster. Still not near as fast as today, but we're still talking 20 years ago. Uh, we took it to Fontana, California for the qualifiers. Uh, this vehicle actually finished eighth place in this race. If you don't know, the DARPA Challenge was a robot race from Los Angeles, California to Las Vegas, Nevada, through the desert, completely unmanned. You're not even allowed to follow your own car. You just put it on the starting line and whatever happens, happens. Million dollar prize. So no team actually finished the first race. So they doubled the prize to two million and they ran it again in 2005. So now we had this rock crawler that we called the Navigator. And here we had an air conditioned, cushion box, it had 10 computers running it that were networked, four LiDARs, a radar, five cameras. Each sensor would generate like a raster grid and then we sensor fusioned those together and rolled them as the vehicle moved. It's pretty complex but we had a lot more compute power. We still were using an IMU integrated with a GPS. Um, so this vehicle was quite a bit more capable. And we tested it all through the desert, through Daggett Ridge, uh, through areas where there were cliffs on the side, and all kinds of cool stuff. So in the second challenge, Stanford won the race with their car Stanley, which is now in the Smithsonian, by the way. You can see it there. Um, and, you know, so that ended up pretty good. So right after the race, uh, I ended up taking this Navigator around the country, putting it on display. We're taking it to various exhibits and things. And uh, I probably shouldn't tell the story, but I was at this one exhibit, I remember, and two booths down from mine, there was a Lotus Elise that they had made an electric vehicle. Some new company called Tesla that I never heard of. But it was super interesting and cool, so I went down there to look at it. And I'm talking to these two guys, don't remember their names, but they sure seemed pretty smart. One of them had a little foreign accent. I remember, that's all I remember. <laughs> but they were trying to get me to quit my job and go move to California and work at this startup. And I'm like, I didn't even give it a second thought, man. I'm like, there's no way I'm leaving my job for a startup electric vehicle car company. No chance they're going to make it, right? <laughs> and then finally, they did a third DARPA Grand Challenge. They called it the Urban Challenge, where they made it a city environment. They did it on a closed base out in Victorville. Um, and so they had intersections and other cars driving around and all that. So for this one, we used a Toyota Highlander that we automated. And this thing was like had 12 computers in it, had six LiDARs, five cameras, had tons of sensors. This is how a lot of other companies are still trying to do it. I might add, in all the time I was doing this, I always thought it was super easy to get a vehicle to drive itself and do like 90%, 97% of what it's supposed to do. The whole problem is in the last 3%, you know? How do you if then else your way to every infinite number of possibilities that are going to happen? Until I think I watched um, Tesla's like full self drive or whatever they called it day where they, t where they first rolled out their computers and they started talking about how they're gathering information from all the cars they have on the road every day. And that was the first time I really believed that the problem could be solved, you know, by gathering massive amounts of data from all the cars all around the world and then feeding that into, you know, a neural net and and coming out with something that's actually going to work. Super cool. So this was around 2008 with the last DARPA Urban Challenge. And uh, I did a little interview on Good Morning America, I'll show you here, and then we'll go drive the car. Good morning, We're joined by David Armstrong, the University of Florida School of Engineering. They're working on robotic cars, and we're sitting in kind of one of these, it's basically on a dune buggy frame, but they have another one that they're working on, which is based on a Toyota hybrid. It's a Highlander hybrid. Now let's kind of get over here and show you how this car drives itself. We're not talking about a joystick operated car, a remote control car. We're talking about a real robotic car. So David, how does that work? Well, Sam, the, the car has a map of all the roads in its computer brain and it can plan a path to its goal as it executes toward the goal 
It can stay in its lane, obey speed limits, negotiate busy intersections, and even get in and out of its own parking space. All that on its own with no input or no help. That's right, there's no remote control. And how do you manage to make that happen inside there? Well, the robot has a lot of sensors on board. We use eight lasers and five cameras, and it builds like a virtual world model of everything that it sees. Then it makes millions of decisions per second to keep it on its path. This car is thinking and doing and driving on its very own. If anybody's inside, they can be putting on their eye makeup, reading the paper, drinking coffee, talking on the cell phone. You can do all that in these cars because you don't even need to do anything in these cars. That's right. It can do all the stuff we normally do anyway, but it can do it safely. That's just exactly like what we saw in movies and never really thought it would happen. Now, this is kind of used for defense uh, purposes, but we may see this in our own cars. Oh, yeah. Uh, eventually, this the same technology that we're putting into the defense will show up in your car and mine. That's amazing let's get to the boards we'll show you thank you by the way and to your team uh team gator nation all right guys so looks like that day is today let's go see what this thing can do all right so i just got the full self-drive this is the latest version v12.3.3 and we're gonna see what this thing can do this better be good all right, so i'm just driving up to the local lows here and i'm gonna see if this guy's gonna do it so engage all right, here we go. It's driving. Wow. Okay, this guy's stopping. And this makes me really uncomfortable. <laughs> signal stopping kind of far back definitely can't see look at look over here you can't see anything I hope it's not going <laughs> oh, man there's nothing coming oh trucks coming now but it's turning there's a car behind him so don't pull out don't pull out don't pull out don't pull out okay pull out yay hey perfect I'd say it was pretty easy. Okay, wow. See, we would never, I would never. <laughs> this is so different. Guys, I mean, when we're doing 45 in our car, you know, but granted that was 10 years, 15 years ago, we were wearing helmets. <laughs> this is crazy. here. Seems to be doing everything right. All right. I got a bridge, car coming. Jeez, no problem at all. Not, not even a twitch. Very human-like, not robotic. 45. We're doing 55. You have to slow down here. It's not slowing down. Better slow down. So it's just barely slowing down. Okay, now, now we're there. That's good. Coming up on a school zone here. It's probably going to blow through that. So here's, it's four, we're dropping to 40, right? I know it's 40. Yeah, okay, we're at 40. That's good. It's just going to be ready to take over. Let's see if you can see around the truck here. So we got here's the left hand side, right? Stopped right at the stop sign. Now we're pulling up, easing up, nothing's coming. Should pull out. And it does. Missed the car. Nice job. Wow. I'm impressed. It's killing it. It's not robotic. That's the biggest thing. Like every car we've ever built has always been, you know, if then else, you can just feel the code rolling. Hear it, you don't feel it at all. It's like there's a magic genie in the box. Okay, magic genie, let's see what you do here. Boom, no problem. 
a little bit of tracks. See if it cheats oh, through here or not, or stays behind this car. I would probably cheat that. Wow, it's coming in hot. A little uncomfortable here. Okay, what are you going to do? You're going to stay behind here. I guess that's the legal thing to do. I probably would have cheated it, but I'm not going to fault it for that. And actually did the now right thing. Left onto Northwest US Highway now, nothing's coming, so it's a little easier. We kind of got lucky there. Would have been nice if we'd had some traffic. Now we're going to turn right up here. Oh, good job. Moved over. Still not coming. I'm actually paying closer attention than if I was driving myself. Definitely. Way more attention paid. So get over. Yeah, that's good. It's amazing. Okay, it's green. Nothing to worry about here. Okay, uh, sorry about the angle there. But we made it nice and smooth. Weird left. I hope it doesn't jump over into that. Yeah, so that's weird how it didn't get in the left lane there. But that's exactly how I do it. Isn't that funny? Like I would have not liked it to get in the left lane there to turn because it's uncomfortable feet, that your way. Destination will be on the like right. it drove like a human would drive it. It's a little squirrely, but we're in a parking lot. Right? Whoa, where are you going, buddy? Okay, I think I'm going to take over now, but good job. Way to go. Nailed it. All right, we're leaving Lowe's. Got my stuff, and I'm back in autopilot. Stopped good there. Now turn right on to Northwest. It's a little, little bit of a trouble looking to the left over here. We'll see how it deals with that. Nobody's coming, so stopped short again. Creeping up. Not, eh, not too bad. Most people just blow through that stop sign. All right, now we're gonna go left. 500 feet, turn uh, left onto Northwest yeah, okay. US Highway 441. A little slow getting over. Now I'd get over like right now. Yeah, good. Oh. I got the light. Are we going to make it? Looks like we're going to make it. Okay. So I'm not steering. It goes into the close lane. That's right. Yeah, good, man. Perfect. Nice acceleration, too. Zipped right up. I guess the biggest thing so far is it's very human-like, very natural, not robotic, very pretty in general. This is just so much riskier than anything we would have tried doing back in the day. It's, it amazes me that uh, Tesla would basically put this in the hands of two million people. <laughs> That just blows my green mind. Green light. We're in traffic. This corner is kind of tight when it comes around. You tend to swing wide, you'll run into somebody. I'm keeping my hand on the wheel. He's back a little bit. So, oh yeah, that was easy. No problem. Oh, well, that's better than I do it. <laughs> wow, I'm impressed, man. So far, so good. Now I don't got to worry about getting old and not being able to drive. That's good. Don't go. Don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. Wow. <laughs> I'm probably a lot more nervous than most people based on my history. Um, yeah, so here we go. With the 20 is in effect, and we're doing 40, so I better slow down quick because I don't want to get a ticket. All right, I'm still doing 40, and this is school. i got to get the brakes here. I'm sure it would have slowed down, but, well, no, maybe not. It doesn't know, the flashing light. There's probably a way to flag that for Tesla. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm, I'm not an authorized flagger, probably. It's back on. It's 
zip us right back up to 45. Yeah, so for 30 years I've been working on this kind of stuff and I've done countless interviews in the press and they always ask, you know, when will this be on the road? And, well, it looks like today's the day. <laughs> I, I would probably, I probably would have said five years back then and it, it took 30. <laughs> But looks like we're about there, guys. Man, they keep tweaking this and making it a little better, a little better. Won't be long before you won't have to even be sitting in the driving seat here. Well, let's see how well it slows down. That's coming in a little too hot for me. I would have slowed down sooner. Wow, it's not even really. <laughs> That's pretty aggressive. Not bad, though. I wouldn't fault it for that. It's just a little more aggressive than I would go. It's a tight corner. Slowing down and turn. Nice. So full self-driving has finally arrived. We got self-driving cars. Good job to everyone at Tesla. It's amazing. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one.